These are samples of what is entertaining your children when they're watching television, video, or video games six to seven hours every day. We want you to know what is actually happening to your children. Roar Rosa is one of the most prominent spokespersons in Norway for Children Guard. This organization is the watchdog over all children's media and gaming throughout the country. He has presented the warnings on violence in TV and computer games to the Prime Minister of Norway and has also interacted with parents and parenting organization. Listen to what he says. Jo, jeg slo som sagt på TV ganske tilfeldig, og det første bildet som da slår mot meg, det er nærbildet av en som fikk... Just by chance I turned on the TV, and the first thing I saw was someone getting their throat cut open. You would think that would be on late night TV, but it was actually 6.15. It made me pretty mad because this was the time when many children were watching TV. I recorded 10 episodes, and then I found the advertisers, about 40 in all. I wrote each one a letter and told how I had seen their commercials on a very violent program being aired on prime time viewing for children. I asked what they thought about it because after all, they were the ones paying for this violence. Between 70 to 80% of all advertisers removed their commercials and the result was that series was moved to a much later time slot. I've been traveling all over giving speeches on children and the ways they are influenced. Do you want to know why? Well, it's to open the parents' eyes to everyday life of children. You ask me, aren't the children aware of this? Don't they already know what's happening? What's shocking the parents the most is computer games. Video violence is not a new phenomenon. That has been already been around for many years. Even our children, they have watched it and they have been a passive spectator to the violence in the video and in the films. What is new, however, is the video games and the terrible violence that's in the games. The more the children are murdering, the more violent they become, the more points they get. We don't know what's happening to our children. First of all, because computer games alone are a bigger business than all the other media together. It is actually becoming greater than video and cinema. Not just how widespread it is, but also the contents are alarming. It's much more brutal, more realistic. The games have more feel of a movie than of a game. What is in now is that you become the burglar, the bad guy, to bet on the game, and then you use murder, you use robbery, and violence as tools of the game to get what you want. Now, let's try they can get all this from the internet. You can buy them in any magazine store. There are computer games that have the CDs in them. And they don't even give any age restrictions. It's proven that a 12 and 13 year old can go into a store and buy these computer games even if it has an 18 year old restriction. I can see three different ways computer games influence the children. First, they become verbally and physically more violent. Second, they are anxious and frightened. Third, is apathy. They don't react to violence any longer, not fictional or real violence. They are using this kind of simulation for soldiers to remove their resistance to violence and killing. About three or four years ago, it was realized that the most popular video games were even more violent and more realistic than the ones they were using for military training. In other words, 
the stimulation and mechanisms that have been used on adults to break down their resistance against violence is now available to an entire generation of youth. I made the mistake of wrestling Mitch. Dave Grossman is a former lieutenant colonel at West Point Military Academy in the United States. He is now a professor of psychology and is used as an expert advisor in many cases where guns have been used in violence in schools. Dave Grossman says that there is a great resistance against violence and murder in each normal person. How great this resistance is was clearly demonstrated during World War II. Only 15 to 20 percent of the American soldiers were able to shoot to kill at a short distance. Because of this, there was a change in the military psychological training. The square target was replaced with a human figure. During the Korean War, the willpower to kill had increased to 50 percent. In other words, they had succeeded in weakening the resistance to kill and commit violence. Today in the military, the willpower to kill has increased to 95%. They have almost succeeded in totally removing the resistance to violence and murder. The most important tool for this training is the murder simulator, where one repeatedly shoots at an image of a live person on a screen until it becomes a natural reflex. Dave Grossman says, today there are computer games that are more brutal and more realistic than our murder simulator. The mechanisms that are used to tear down the resistance in our recruits is now available daily to our entire generation of children through the most popular computer games. It will take another seven to eight years before we will know how this will change our society. However, from the experience of the murder simulator over the past 10 years, there is reason to be concerned. Today, youth are faced with being fed the examples of youth killing youth. Could this be the result of these kinds of games? Well, in some situations, possibly. But when it goes so far, you cannot blame the games alone. It's not just the media. There are a lot of other things that have gone wrong. But media, of course, is a large contributor. What scares me is that you will have an entire generation where the boundaries for accepted violence have been moved. Television has greatly changed. They now send programs with much more violence early in the evening. It is easy for kids to watch since it is often hard for parents to control because they are not close enough to watch their children. So what can we as parents do to prevent or correct this situation? Well, the most important is to be there. Not just be there, but to actively be there to see how our children are reacting to what we see. Secondly, Offer them some alternatives. Make alternatives. Set boundaries. It's important. What we're watching, they're watching. What games we are playing, they are playing. In contrast to the pain and destruction that the children receive through media, there are also good forces that are trying and helping develop the good characters in the children. The Swedish inventor, Anders Rosén, has tried to show that the good characters in the children can be developed in a good way. That's why he started a worldwide organization called Snillebigstad. In 1991, 
Anders Racin from Gothenburg, Sweden, arranged a competition for inventors. Children and adults competed in finding the best solution to safely drop a raw egg from a height of 80 feet. The children were found to be the most creative. This led Anders Racine to the idea of Snella Brikstana, which started in 1993. Snil Blikstana encourages children to explore their creativity in everyday life. It builds up the children's self-confidence and once a year has a competition where children can show their creativity. This organization is designed for children 6 to 11 years. Not every child is a good reader or writer, but they are continually encouraged in this new arena to prove their skills. They are given a generous amount of stimulation to develop ideas and creativity. Because of these kids, adult mindsets are changed to new possibilities. I'm, I, I have seen something that very few people have seen. I have been in, 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 a, in a special circumstances and I know something that if people, kids, get a chance to show their creativity, uh, they grow, they got the self-confidence. And that's the most important we can give kids. So that's what I, so I, I decided. How many, Philip, hasn't we just smashed so, uh, through the school system in all these years? Not in Sweden only, worldwide. Because we haven't understand how kids think, how they work. We only do it the, 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 the grown-up way. So I started to find, to said, I had to do something. But I have no solution on the problem. Because what is, I had to do is it changed uh, attitude, changed the school system. So this was 88. That was the foundation of, of Snillebrikstad. Look here, we have something that we had to be very aware of. Uh, in our society, how to, uh, how to um, increase uh, the possibility for kids to be creative in, in the school system and elsewhere. Because the future is lying on this. And um, so I started a very small scale here in Stenningsund, in, in Kristnedal school. And, 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 and the, 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 um, the teacher, there was one teacher that said, okay. I said, we make a try. We never see what happened. So we started 22 kids in the class that was 22. All kids had something. And then I know that this is going to change. And then happened two years after. That was, I said, this maybe will change the, 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 the pedagogy system to be more problem based learning and more creativity in, into school in the ordinary schoolwork. And the headmaster said, do, do you really think, Sanders, that would be beautiful? Oh, yes, we see. Only half a year later, she called me, and this is a very critical moment, and said, something fantastic happened today. Because we had in the classroom, there was a girl called Maria, eight years. When the, uh, the teacher went back to 1842 years, you know, standing in the front, telling everybody what to do, she raised up. She had a t-shirt with the Snillerblix. She was a Snillerblix, eight-year-old Maria. She said, teacher, look here. I am a Snillerblix. I can think for myself. That was very important. She... Uh, come to the conclusion. She has so much confidence telling that I have my own thoughts. Every kid in the world is a potential uh, snillerblixt. And um, so I think everyone, every kid should have this ch chance to be a snillerblixt. That, that's very simple. Uh, because I know what happened with kids that get this chance. I've seen so many, many examples of it. And it's always so with people that people don't want to be st steered, controlled by people. People want uh, to be leaned by ideas. 
lead by ideas. When you have a good idea, you can spread that all over the world. And that's very important. That, that is why uh, uh, Snillblix now is idea-driven organization. As parents, we want for our children to be able to develop the skills that is within them. We want them to see their dream come through, that they can become entrepreneurs, building, create. There is a new toy on the market called Maximac that will help them become what they dream. We're building Maximac. We're building Maximac. We're building Maximic. We're building Maximic. They're building and testing. Forget about resting. Learning the meaning of wrong and right. Seeing their actions make all the difference. Forming opinions narrow and wide. Starting as youngsters, as small entrepreneurs. Growing up as great engineers. The joy of creating is in the base. To fulfill their task. To win the race, expanding their curious minds, cheered by solutions they find, filled with excitement, showing off all the time. We're building Maximac. 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 We're building Maximac.